this video I'm going to talk a bit about Groom, often considered one of the stronger cards in Dominion. Uh, what is Groom? Uh, Groom is a gainer. Uh, you get to gain a card costing up to four. And let's see, if it's an action card, it comes with an action, a horse. Uh, if it's a treasure card, it comes with a silver, another treasure card. And if it's a victory card, well, it doesn't come with another victory card, but you, you do get a cantrip out of it. So what is making Groom so strong? Why is it considered one of the best? Well, let's think about other gainers of four costs uh, to start with, maybe like Workshop and Ironworks. Um, one, of the, one of the big problems with these is that, you know, you get them, early on and you play them and, and you gain whatever it is that's good but then you don't get to like buy whatever you want um they they hurt your economy so what makes groom better for for this is that it's draw neutral when it's gaining action cards and victory cards uh, with action cards that comes in the form of a horse it ends up being your next shuffle so eventually uh victory cards right now but what this means is that it doesn't slow you down as much as these other gainers uh, you get to you know with action cards, eventually maintain your economy. Uh, there are some gainers of four costs, we'll say uh, Sculptor, Falconer, uh, Hill Fortcher, um, that are also draw neutral, uh, but they cost five. Uh, what that means is that, well, especially in the case of Hill Fort, which is in a split pile, uh, you, you can't get them early. Um, so Groom costs four, so you can get it early. You can usually open it, in fact. I mean, yes, you can always open it, in fact. And uh, it can also gain copies of itself, and this ends up being a big deal uh, later in the game, which we'll go into later. Uh, what does a standard room game look like? Uh, most of the time you're not seeing victory cards. Uh, we'll talk more about those later. Um, but you're, you want to you know, take advantage of this being draw neutral thing. Um, so you're, you're trying to gain action cards useful for your deck early and often. Uh, so when do you get Groom? Uh, when there's something that you want a lot of, that is action card that costs four or less. Uh, that's often a village. Um, villages usually cost four or less. You usually want a lot of them. So Groom for your villages. Uh, we should note that Groom is terminal. So, you know, you are getting villages, but if you're not gaining villages with Groom, you're probably going to want some sort of village because uh, Groom is going to be played. It's going to be a terminal, and you may want to play more of them. You may want to draw whatever you just gained. Uh, and so you, you're gonna need a village to do that. Um, there is this estate gain option that usually does come up in games, um, but it should be a, it should be a last resort for most, most of the time. Um, you, you don't want to be gaining estates just to kind of keep your turn going, but you, you will do it to keep your turn going. Um, it's, it's a last resort to keep things moving. And you also should be watching out for endings. Uh, we'll, we'll go into that a bit more later. So here's two boards where you know, I think Groom is good. Um, this first one, uh, there's there's a village in Hamlet, uh, costs less than four. I'm going to be gaining a lot of those. And the second one, uh, there's a good draw card that costs less than four. Well, I don't know about good, but there's a draw card that costs less than four, an advisor that you can be getting a lot of, and you'll be pretty happy to do that. Uh, let's take a closer look at this first one. All right, so as I mentioned earlier, Groom is good here for picking up Hamlets. Uh, what's a general game plan and why do you want to do that? Uh, you can thin down with Forager, uh, get a bunch of Hamlets. Once you're thinned down, you can play a bunch of Hamlets in the same turn or with Stampede, potentially. Uh, play a bunch of Hamlets, get a bunch of plus buys, get a bunch of peddlers, uh, eventually add Journeyman, which can draw with Hamlet, and if you so desire, Forage will be able to turn peddlers straight into province. Uh, where is Groom going to come into this? Well, we're going to open it. Um, usually with gainers, you want to be opening them. Uh, that's where you, you're going to get the most out of them. Um, if you delay them, you might not get as much play. Uh, so you, you want to be getting them early, getting the most gains out of them possible. Uh, and then we want Forager to thin down. Uh, this is kind of a rotten draw, uh, just not trashing an estate, uh, but Nothing to complain too much about. Uh, let's trash a copper. Uh, we're actually going to pick up another groom and another forager, thin down a bit faster. Uh, at this point, I don't think we really want a third forager. Let's just grab a hamlet and start to just take these hamlets while we can. Uh, so here we see a horse. Um, we can imagine like this horse is some other card, like, I don't know, 
another copper, and this turn wouldn't be that productive. Uh, but now that it's, you know, here, uh, we get to uh, forage at this state, uh, grab a hamlet, and if we want to actually grab two peddlers, but let's grab peddler hamlet. So without that horse, we'd be doing quite a bit less. We wouldn't be hitting four here, and we'd be pretty unhappy. But with the full, with the horse, everything's a little bit better. Um, this is a little bit weird. Um, I think we're just going to forge this out. Let's take another hamlet, and let's take another peddler. Uh, at some point, a stampede would be useful, though I think it's pretty unlikely in this deck. Uh, but here you can start to see, you know, discard for buy. Horse, more discards for buy, get to trash an estate, and let's pick up just a bunch of peddlers. So at this point, I'd say that this deck qualifies as, as being moving along quite nicely. Um, get to play some horses. It almost it almost looks like draw. Uh, I'm gonna try to be a little bit conservative about playing as your plus buy. Uh, Forger will give plus buy for basically the same cost. Um, we'll discard a groom because the goal is is let's get these peddlers and four peddlers, one journeyman, and at this point I think that this deck qualifies as being moving. Um, probably gain an estate to try to keep things going. Uh, let's gain another estate to keep things going. It's kind of a last resort, but I think we should be able to get back around to things uh, just fine. Um, we don't really need more actions. Here's the journeyman we've been looking for. Uh, we'll name Copper. Uh, and look, we even got back around to these to these two estates, uh, or at least one of them, to trash it out. Um, let's grab, like, I don't know, a forge and a journeyman and... Uh, this deck is, this deck is moving. So you've seen getting going into a fast start, but how about a fast end too? Uh, this is where, you know, if there's a green card, you're going to be playing a groom, green rush, most likely. Uh, four cost and below, all PP with groom, it's going to be a rush. Uh, pretty much every time you see it. Uh, there's going to be some exceptions, but most of the time you're going to be trying to, you know, pile groom, the all PP in estates as fast as possible. Uh, usually that starts, you know, you get your grooms uh, so that you can get the all VP, and then as soon as the grooms start colliding, uh, you're going to start getting the all VP uh, to make your grooms non-terminal, and then the last one will gain a groom. Um, this will usually end the game in somewhere between, you know, 11, 13 turns uncontested. Uh, it's it's going to be fast. It's going to score probably enough to beat lots of things. Uh, it ends up being good with nearly any VP, like even something as bad as Tunnel. Uh, Groom Tunnel can be a quite effective rush. Um, when you have an action card like uh, Mill or Island as your VP source, uh, it'll play a little bit differently. You'll usually get more of the action early, or more of the VP early, because you get Cantrip and a Horse from it. Uh, and from these, just because of that dynamic, you're drawing a little bit more, so you're usually looking to end up provincing a little. Uh, here's some examples. Uh, this first one has Groom and Gardens, so you're going to be playing Groom and Gardens. And the second one has Groom and Mill, so you're going to be playing Groom Mill um, and eventually getting some provinces. Uh, I'm going to show a little demonstration on this first board here. So this one's actually a little bit non-standard, and the reason for that is demand. Um, what demand means is that normally you'd open something like Silver Groom, uh, and that would be your first shuffle, but what demand means is that, because you want to get groom in the first shuffle and you want to start gaining grooms, what demand means is that uh, you can actually demand a groom early and play it when you normally would otherwise. We're actually going to open Silver Bounty Hunter, that gives a pretty high chance of hitting 5 turn 3, like this. Uh, so, Bounty the Estate, uh, demand a groom, and we'll actually have the good fortune of reaching 5 again and being able to continue to demand grooms. So just getting grooms in, trying to play grooms as much as possible, as early as possible. Uh, again, that, groom, demand groom. Uh, obviously there will be some other considerations when you're contested, like you might start to uh, green a little bit earlier. 
Um, here we have two grooms, so in hand, so one of them gets to be played non-terminally like that, and the other for another groom. Uh, keep demanding the grooms works amazingly. Um, just play out as much stuff as possible. Take as many green cards as is needed. Uh, here we can bounty hunter gardens. Uh, we could also think about grooming another gardens and trying to demand it that way. I think that's that's what we're gonna do. Um, really press the luck here. Um, and so we we did get to where we wanted. We can bounty an estate. That'll leave gardens as something that can be demanded later, which is fantastic. Um, or sorry. Gardens is something that can be bountied later. Uh, let's keep trying to get to this five. We do get it. Uh, demand a groom. Um, let's just, you now. I think we'll be fine. We can buy an estate here and this'll be, this'll be the winning turn. So, 10 turns. Um, let's grab another card to get it to 43 and, uh, there's the ending deck. Not not a whole lot that's interesting. Uh, the bounty hunter is probably a little bit unusual. Um, ending with a horse is probably going to be a little bit unusual, but there's a groom rush. Gaining green isn't the only way groom can make the game abruptly end. You know, I've been hinting at it. I said uh, you want to be careful about piles, and that groom gaining groom can be can be relevant and uh, leads to this pile out trick because groom gaining groom is not draw neutral, and so with a lot of actions a groom, and an empty discard pile, uh, you can actually just go straight through, gain all the grooms, and empty that pile. It's usually called an auto pile. Um, and how this works is once you have, you know, all these actions, empty discard pile, groom in hand, uh, you need to be able to draw two cards. Uh, you tend to have horses lying around, and what you'll do is you'll groom for a groom. Uh, this will put a groom and a horse in your discard pile. Uh, you'll draw that horse in the groom, and then you can groom for a groom again, and just keep doing this until the grooms are out. Um, when you start with multiple grooms, uh, you know, you can you can do this with just one, but you, usually groom is not going to be the end of the game. Uh, when you start with multiple grooms, it means you can also take out, you know, however many grooms you start with, you can take that many cards out of another pile. And so that's something to keep in mind for later, so that's why you might want to, you know, accumulate grooms throughout the game so that you can do this autopile and then also take something else out to win. Uh, here's a place where this ended up being relevant recently for me, and let's take a look at it. So here we are, ready to win. Uh, there's an estate and discard pile, had to keep the turn going at some point. Uh, so let's draw that up to make a clean discard pile. Don't want to discard anything to maintain that. Um, Pretty close as it is. Um, I would have the gains to pile out and potentially a bit more with traveling fare, but I do need to score quite a bit. So I don't think it's I don't think it's quite there without doing some amount of trick. Um, we have some grooms in hand. Uh, there's some grooms in here. There's plenty of actions. Uh, we have actually more than one groom, so we'll be able to pile village green with grooms once once we get the rest of those. And we have something that can draw two cards. So so we're ready to do this uh, little trick. Uh, so. Let's just do the mechanics. Uh, groom for groom. Uh, vault is going to be our, our first horse. Um, no discarding. Need to keep it clean. Um, groom for groom. Draw them with the horse. Groom for groom. Draw them with the horse. Repeat. And then we can go ahead and grab these last two village greens. Uh, end actions. Just buy a colony for the win. And let's not do any of that stuff. So. There's mechanically how the groom autopile works. Hope this bit about groom is useful. Now see why it's so strong. Well, see you all.